Welcome to Bill Jordan into our house. John and I get to speak with our favorite boomer. Well, John's actually one of my favorite boomers too, but certainly one of the world's favorite favorite boomers, Bill Jordan. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure to be with you. Hey, Thanks Bill, um, I, I can't remember where it was, but somebody uh, mentioned the word social filter. As, mm. as we get older, we either lose or gain a social filter, meaning we're, we're more cautious of what we say. Do you have a social filter? Um, I do. And I think I have uh, tuned it to be greater than it used to be. Meaning more? Um, yeah, I think I have more? more of a filter. Although I tend to see older people sometimes taking great pride in losing their filter, being willing to say whatever they want to say to anybody about anything. And I think I've gone the other way. Uh, I think I've gone to more of a live and let live. Now, my wife may have a different opinion on that. My daughter may have a different opinion on that. But I'm trying to, you know, one of the one of the notions in my book, Embrace the Boom, one of my practices is two ears, one mouth to listen more than I speak. Yeah. And not everybody cares what my opinion is. And I need to be aware of that. And, you know, how, how that even comes about it with a social filter is is recommending things to people. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, try this, try this pizza. And they they come back to me, well, it was okay. Yeah. And after that, that happens a number of times or I recommend a movie or a TV show and it comes back, eh, it was okay, it wasn't our thing. It's like, why even recommend? I mean, if we can say, hey, I like this movie, you may not, your mileage may vary. Um, but to tell people what they will like or what is funny and all that stuff, or they, you know, what are you doing wearing that? Or what's with the tattoo in the middle of your forehead? None of my business. Yeah. <laughs> That's just kind of the you, way you know, I'm going now. It's interesting because I too have uh, gained a social filter. I think it was in relationship to my grandchildren that I first realized, you know, you're not their parents. You can't tell them what to do or how to grow up. And you can't tell your kids how to parent anymore. That was mm -hmm. so I, I ended up biting my tongue on lots of occasions. And and that's really a social filter. I'm not sure I filter my thoughts in other places, but with the right. children and the grandchildren, right. there's definitely a filter. There. <clears throat> right. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've known people who seem to take great pride in it. You know, I mentioned again in my book and I can relate it to this. I have worked with people and you guys probably have, too. Who will say out loud, oh, I can be brutally honest. Yes. And they're yes. very proud of that. And what I learned, and it took me a while to learn it with careful observation, is that they tended to be more proud of the brutality than of the honesty. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm yeah, aware to... anytime I hear somebody say that. You know, I, I think that uh, I can recognize, uh, especially what John just said about uh, you can't parent your grandkids, what tell your kids how to do it. First of all, we did such a great job with our our kids anyway. It's a shame that we can't because look how much better off their kids would be. But giving that up for a moment, I find that uh, uh, it, it's not a matter of age necessarily. I think in the last five or six years are because of our political comment uh, 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 context that we're in is that most people have seemed to have lost their social filter when it comes to what side they take. And so that's a little disconcerting uh, well, altogether. So I think the world has basically, uh, in many ways, lost all sense of social filter. So maybe as we get older, uh, I don't just notice it that much because that same jackass six years ago, who's now in his 60s, is still the same jackass. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> then you know, so you talk about it. social right. social filters. I mean, a lot of this could come from uh, probably dire directly related to social media, right? Where the I call them keyboard commandos have no problem typing whatever they want to in a comment or in yeah. a post, uh, where they would never make a comment to you to probably to your face. Yeah, like they will. And, and I think there's also some you know people who drink and post, and I think that should be forbidden. <laughs> you know, sometimes, especially at night, I'll notice that doesn't seem like them. Um, 
Um, so yeah, I think the the keyboard commando stuff has given some people of this false uh, courage to say whatever they want to say. Um, we've lost a lot about. I mean, the old school when we were raised was, hey, when you're in different you're around different people, try not to discuss religion and politics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what is social media almost all about it? Politics. It's crazy. Right. I, think, I don't know uh, if anybody, up, ever, I have never read an opposing political view online that has made me change my mind. I think uh, when all oh, three of us were growing up, we were told, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it, especially yeah. around strangers. But first of all, I, I, I want to, because I, I haven't heard the term <laughs> before, so I want to get Bill Jordan uh, uh, credit for being the first person in public to have used the phrase keyboard commandos. I think we keyboard, should do a whole commander. segment on it because that could be your new book. Keyboard commandos. A lack of filter when you're online. Yeah. And then and then I would be uh, probably beaten up online by people who didn't like it. <laughs> Perfect. It would go viral. By, fellow, by other keyboard commandos would take me to task. Right. Yeah. Well, I think we could all use a little bit more filter most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I I am also trying to embrace that notion of everybody's fighting some battle that you may not know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so just a little just a little gentleness, a little kindness, which is not normally in my, you know, not maybe not normally come to the top. Uh, rises to the top in my personality. So I'm trying to be that way. And that's probably a function of age, too, and real, realizing how precious the life is. You know, for I, all think, I, I think to solve all those problems when you don't know exactly what's going on, the one thing you can always do is embrace the blue. That's it. Amen. You, know, you, take care, you take care of yourself and do what you can. Uh, but yeah, as I say, you know, in addition to taking care of others, take care of yourself. And part of that is as a baby boomer or whatever age you are, where you find yourself, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.